Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how you can simulate the SideFX Labs trees uh, with Vellum. So for this I, I took one of the example trees they offer, um, which is the willow tree. I think they also got a pine tree and um, an umbrella tree, I think. So basically what these tools are is you can model your own trees. So the way it works is that you have a trunk generator, which is your level zero first, first node, and then you stack branches with a branch generator on top of, of each other. In these nodes you can find things like radius, placement, how many, the angle, and with that it's actually a really cool tool to generate trees. And with a few levels later it looks something like this. Um, you, you can actually make all kinds of trees with it. And then you also have a tree leaf generator, which generates leaves on the last level. Um, this is how the tree looks like. Um, let's see what we have as outputs. It gives us, uh, first of all, the out tree is the mesh of the tree. Then a second output is the skeleton. Um, this is actually really cool, really good base for, for Vellum to use because we later then just um, simulate these curves and then point deform the, our tree model with it. And uh, third, I have this tree leaf node. I delete the previous levels because I want those leaves to be separate because I first want to simulate the tree skeleton and later then attach the leaves to the simulation and simulate them again. So. After you create your own tree, uh, I, I like to have my three outputs and then first of all save those to disk and load them in again. That way it's a bit more organized. And let's see, so I don't need the tree model for now. I just want to first make sure I can, I prepare my skeleton so I can simulate it with Vellum. So uh, first of all, we have a lot of, a lot of points. So if, for example, for, for, the, for the trunk, it's better to have less points because the more points you have, the heavier it gets because it calculates the mass per point. And uh, with these kind of points, you will never get a stiff curve. It will always bend and fall over. This is definitely not what we want with the trunk or the, uh, the first few branch levels. Uh, we also get quite a few attributes. Uh, so first I clean, I remove all the groups and remove attributes, um, um, only the branch level and the radius. These come in really useful later to adjust our uh, constraints, so I keep them. First I want to resample the curve. Um, now we have way less, and one important thing is I don't resample it uh, with the segment length, uh, because I want the longer curves to have the same amount of points as the really small branches. Uh, this way the, the trunk gets uh, is a lot more stable and doesn't bend a lot, but the sm smaller curves, smaller branches bend more actually. So I also generate a curve view attribute here. Then I create a few groups. First the starting group, start points. So each branch got a starting point. It's basically the curve view value zero. Uh, the only thing I don't want is the, is the trunk. Uh, the, the trunk starting points, I, I, I don't need those. I just need the branch level starting points in one group. Also, I want to create a root group to pin. So it's basically just a bounding box on the root and I want to pin these three points uh, so they don't get simulated. Uh, the, the trunks are usually really heavy and steady so they don't, don't move at all. Um, now I want to, for each branch level, I want to create a group. Um, so uh, they, they also have a specific name, it's if level 0, 1, 2, and I just say, okay, if the branch level is 2, then you go into the level 2 group. Um, now, one thing what that happens with the, uh, when you resample those curves is that this point, for example, is not on top of another point. So they, they, they are not uh, on each other, and if you now use a fuse node that might work 
but then maybe some of the closer points right here also get fused and we don't want that. So I wrote just a few lines of X and uh, I just went over every point in my starting point group and searched for the nearest point on my previous branch level and then snapped it to the, this position. And when you now fuse with a really small snap distance, uh, nothing else gets, gets fused but only the starting points. So this is actually a really good base for our simulation. I will, I will talk about these vellum constraints now. Um, first let's go to the vellum constraint. And uh, first thing I did is I pinned the root group to animation. And I want to play around with the density, um, which is there to calculate the mass, and then with the edge length scale, which is the thickness. You can visualize it and you can see that it roughly demonstrates how thick each, uh, each branch is. And the smaller the branches get, the, smaller, uh, the higher the level uh, of the generator, the smaller the um, thickness gets. Uh, the way I did this is I just manipulated uh, a few attributes. So you can see here, if you calculate varying, you can scale by an attribute, which is basically just a multiplier for it. So um, if you, let's, let's take the, the thickness here, for example. I just made a ramp and I'm always multiplying it by the level. So I let, let me just show you quickly what I mean. For example, the thickness. You can see that the thickness here is, uh, or maybe I demonstrate it with a band stiffness. So the band stiffness here is on the trunk is really high. Um, it's the number, uh, it's one multiplied by one. So then we, we multiply with one more level. So I, I created this, this level, float level, and I fit the branch level from zero to six, which is the old one, to my new one to 0 0.05. You can see that I turned around these values. So basically my trunk is now one, and till my last, to, till my last level of branches, it actually gets lower and lower and lower. So this way I, I can just multiply it with my band stiffness, with my thickness. And what I set up here is actually then just um, multiplied with the thickness attribute, which gets lower and lower. All right, so um, nothing really else I did here. Maybe a bit playing around with the band stiffness, uh, stretching, obviously we don't have any stretching at all. And uh, on the Vellum Tree Solver, uh, I just put the subsets to four. Uh, I, I would always do this on default. Uh, inside here, we also have a pop wind just to show you the movement to make things a little bit uh, more exciting. And then use a point deformer <coughs> to, um, with the skeleton mesh, deform those points here, deform our out tree or our loaded mesh geometry um, and if we catch it it looks something like this and you can see now that these small branches are moving way more and are more wiggly than these thick tree branches and the trunk right because uh, we have a way lower density here and a way lower thickness which we just before got really 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 good uh, uh, adjust with our branch levels. All right, so let's let's move to the to the leaves. Uh, we load in the leaves, and one important thing is don't go when if you if you're still trying out and set up your whole valve setup, don't go for all of the leaves. We now have nearly two thousand leaves. Uh, I would just take ten percent of it. That's absolutely enough to adjust your settings, and then later come back and maybe simulate all of them. <clears throat> First, I want to create a group for every root of the leaves. Uh, I, these are the this the group I later want to attach to my um, collision geometry, which is the tree. And uh, the way I did this is there's this group by range node. I call the group leaf root, and then I select six points of, and here's the the endpoints. This is 
basically here I deleted all but well, I left one leaf and the number of points of these leaves are plugged in here with these uh, this uh, endpoints expression this here it points to the out leaves points which is my null here and this is why it knows it's 81 points and I select the first six and if I do that in range you can see that I have the first six points of every leaf uh, here I just delete a few to make it more light and here I got my tree simulation as a collider and first of all I use uh, the vellum cloth you can also play around with the density and the thickness and it basically creates constraints per point between the between the points this way it's a little bit behaving like cloth and now you want to attach those points to the tree so uh, you you choose a vellum constraint attach and you want to attach the points uh, is the leaf root the group we just created and the target group is, are all the branches which is also a group which comes with uh, the tree generator tools and the target path is the low tree simulation which is this one here so uh, we attach those we constrain to the closest points and we have no stretching at all so the stretch difference is really really high you can later also go in and have this breaking threshold so when you have a lot of wind a lot of st uh, stretch stress then a few of the leaves can really fall down um, and now to the vellum solver same thing just default for sub steps you go inside you can find a pop wind um, and if you save that to disk it looks something like this you can see the the, the wiggling from the even though I, I don't have the display flag on the tree you can you can feel the wiggling of the branches and you can also see that the wind and the wind noise is affecting the the leaves which is really nice and if you merge both both together you have something like this Obviously, we can now go back and simulate it with all our leaves, or we can use colliders to collide with the tree um, and the leaves, or we can even uh, make some leaves fall down. If we just go to the attach, vellum attach, and then use the uh, breaking threshold. Okay, you can basically do that with all the trees you generate with the tree generator because it gives you the, the skeleton which is really cool and a lot of attributes which are very useful to then later use in your uh, vellum setup to set constraint attributes for example um, you just have to be aware of how many levels and branches you have then you have to adjust it a little bit but i hope that works for you and uh, good boy